Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 21st of March. Modi Morrison review India Australia ties, share vision to advance relations in virtual summit. Pakistan Army has asked PM Imran Khan to resign after OIC conference, say reports. And thousands turn up for temporary police personnel recruitment in Nepal. And now for all the details, the second India-Australia virtual summit was held on Monday in which Prime Ministers of India, Narendra Modi, and his Australian counterpart, Scott Morrison, committed to closer cooperation in trade, critical minerals, migration, and mobility education. They reviewed the ties and shared their respective visions to advance this partnership. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held second India-Australia virtual summit with his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison on Monday. Speaking at the open session of the summit, PM Modi expressed delight over setting up a mechanism for the annual summit between India and Australia, which he said will help prepare a structural system for regular review of our relations. Our previous virtual summit, we have our कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप का रूप दिया था और मुझे प्रसन्नता है कि आज हम दोनों देशों के बीच एन्युअल समिट्स का मैकेनिज्म स्थापित कर रहे हैं इससे हमारे संबंधों के नियमित रिव्यू की एक स्ट्रक्चरल व्यवस्था तैयार होगी PM Modi called for early closure of the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement for the economic security of the two countries. He also thanked his Australian counterpart for the initiative to return 29 Indian antiquities. The Australian Prime Minister said there is need to ensure that Europe-like events do not occur in the Indo-Pacific region in reference to the Ukraine crisis during the summit. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla later in a special briefing said, the summit was very fruitful with a constructive and warm exchange of views. Shringla informed that leaders exchanged their perspectives about regional and multilateral matters and global issues of mutual interest, including shared concerns such as terrorism. The mortal remains of Indian student Naveen Shekharappa, who was killed in Russian shelling in Ukraine earlier this month, returned to his hometown, Bengaluru, to his grieving parents. The body of Shekharappa was retrieved from the rubble after he was killed by shelling in the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv on March 1. Relatives and family members of Shekharappa performed religious rituals with his mortal remains. His parents have decided to donate his body to a local medical college for research as per the final wishes of their deceased son. According to India, 22,500 citizens were evacuated safely from Ukraine, including students who were evacuated from Sumi, where they had faced the prospects of being caught in the crossfire. की रिक्वेस्ट किया साहब हमारा बेटा तो जिंदा नहीं कम से कम उसका बॉडी तो लाने के लिए कोशिश कीजिए उन्हें उसी दिन से भरोसे दिया था हमको वो आपका बेटा नहीं हमारा देश का बेटा है आप ये नहीं बोलो आ, आपका बेटा पूरा हमारा देश का बेटा है हमको पूरा ये है हम कंडी उसको जरूरी उसका बॉडी वापस लाने के लिए पूरा जोर लेके ये करें करके and the 14th annual India-Japan annual summit aimed at enhancing bilateral relations between two countries was held over the weekend during which Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced $42 billion investment in India over the next five years. Kishida and Indian counterpart Narendra Modi held deliberations on a wide range of topics and welcomed the launch of several new initiatives between the two countries. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida arrived in India on March 19, the first such visit in his role as Premier, and participated in the 14th India-Japan Annual Summit in capital New Delhi. Kishida announced a 5 trillion yen, that is $42 billion investment in India over the next five years during his meeting with Indian counterpart Prime Minister Narendra Modi, surpassing the $33 billion announced by Tokyo in 2014. India and Japan inked six agreements following talks between the two leaders. PM Modi highlighted that the economic partnership between New Delhi and Tokyo is getting robust. 
In recent years, Japan has supported India's urban infrastructure development and provided funds for a high-speed railway based on its bullet train technology. India and Japan also launched a clean energy partnership for cooperation towards achieving sustainable economic growth, addressing climate change and ensuring energy security. Japanese Prime Minister told Indian Prime Minister that Russia's invasion of Ukraine had shaken the foundation of international order and required a clear response. India and Japan are party to the Quad, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, a security framework that also includes the United States and Australia. The summit between the Indian and Japanese Prime Ministers took place after over three and a half years. The last summit was held in Japan in 2018. The two leaders issued a detailed joint press statement on a number of contemporary global issues, including maritime access into the Indo-Pacific region, especially the South China Sea and sustainable growth in the post-COVID world. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa has asked Prime Minister Imran Khan to step down after the conference of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation this week, according to local media reports. This comes as the parliament is set to hold a session to deliberate on a no-confidence motion filed by the joint opposition against PM Khan on Friday. The Pakistan Army's top brass led by General Kamar Javed Bajwa has asked Prime Minister Imran Khan to resign after the conference of OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, this week, according to local media reports. PM Khan last Friday met Army Chief Bajwa. The meeting is being speculated to have revolved around the recent political developments in the country. It is also being seen as an attempt by Imran Khan to get back in the good books of the powerful military ahead of the no-confidence motion filed by the opposition parties against him. Opposition leaders who accused the Pakistan army of installing Khan as prime minister through a manipulated election in 2018 say he has now lost military's backing. They claim Khan has also lost public support as he struggles with high inflation, a rising current account deficit and depleting foreign reserves. While the premier currently has a majority in the parliament with his coalition partners, the opposition claims that it has the backing of at least 20 lawmakers from the ruling party and its allies. That would be enough to make Khan lose the vote currently scheduled to take place during a National Assembly session on March 25. Even allies of Khan's PTI party have admitted he could be facing defeat. Moving on, the International Monetary Fund has asked Pakistan to explain how it would fund a 1.5 billion US dollar subsidy package announced by Prime Minister Imran Khan. The government late last month reversed the prices of petroleum products, which has put it at odds with the IMF's demands that Islamabad should cut subsidies and tax exemptions to bridge its fiscal deficit. IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has asked Pakistan to explain how it would fund the 1.5 billion subsidy package. Announced by Prime Minister Imran Khan, the country's Finance Minister Shokat Tarin said on Sunday, adding that there are no issues. Facing a no-confidence move in Parliament, Prime Minister Khan had announced a cut in petrol prices by rupees 10 and electricity by rupees 5 last month, despite a steep rise in the global oil market. Tareen said he has done all homework before the final virtual meeting with the IMF on Tuesday over a seventh review of the six billion US dollars rescue package agreed in 2019. Residents across Pakistan have termed the relief only a minor relief as they are still struggling with a poor economy and high flood inflation. <laughs> परेशानी में है लेकिन आम आदमी जो है वो इस वक्त बहुत ज्यादा सफर कर रहा है जो बिल्कुल ही जो गरीब तबका है वो बिल्कुल समझे कि खत्म होने पे आ चुका है The South Asian country had to undertake fiscal tightening measures to pass its last IMF review The reversal of fuel prices has put it at odds with the IMF's demand that Islamabad should cut subsidies and tax exemptions to breach its fiscal deficit 
And in news from Nepal, thousands of applicants from all walks of life turned up to apply for the post of temporary police personnel in Kathmandu on Sunday as the Nepal government has called for recruitment of around 100,000 personnel for maintaining security during the upcoming local level polls. The recruitment drive will continue till Friday. As the Nepal government has called for recruitment of 100,000 temporary police personnel for security during the local level elections in May, thousands of male and female candidates queued in premises of Metropolitan Police Circle in Kathmandu on Sunday to submit their applications. People in the age bracket of 15 to 54 years, including new mothers, were seen waiting in the queues to get their names registered. Locally referred as Mayadi Police or Police Force having a certain period of time for functioning, the applicants can apply for the vacancies from March 20 to 25 at all 75 district police offices. The applicants who get selected will be recruited for a span of 40 days and their duties would dissolve automatically after the commencement of the local body election on May 13. And breaking all odds, a 13-year-old Indian girl with autism, GRI, swam a distance of 17.7 miles from Sri Lanka's Talai Manar to Arichal Munai in India's Tamil Nadu state on Sunday in just 13 hours. After acquiring permission from Sri Lankan and the Indian authorities, Gia, daughter of a naval sailor, began her journey at 4.22 a.m., reached the Indian shore by 5.32 p.m. on Sunday. To assist her, the Sri Lankan Navy gave her protection until the International Maritime Board from where the Indian Coast Guard took over. Upon reaching the shore, Jia was received by a huge crowd which lauded her feet. Her father said the message is quite clear. Let nothing stop you from realizing your true potential. Jia can't express their feeling, but yeah, Papa will do. And the morning when 3 o'clock, the sea was up, you can go through the trailer. Without any expectation, the wind speed was 40 km per hour. Our CAG boat has been crushed, then I thanks to the Sri Lankan Navy. And in a bid to protect sparrows and other birds amid their declining population in urban areas, conservationists in India's Kanpur have distributed around 7,500 wooden nests to people across the city. They claim the initiative Sweet Sparrow Come Back Home has tremendously increased the number of sparrows in Kanpur. Sparrow sightings have significantly diminished over the last few years across India because of noise and air pollution, raging constructions and deforestation. In a bid to preserve sparrows, conservationists in India's Kanpur have distributed around 7,500 artificial wooden nests to the people in the city. Conservationists say the initiative Sweet Sparrow Come Back Home has put a stop to the declining sparrow population over the years and with the planting of more trees, sparrows have begun to return to urban areas. Birds including robin, mina, parrots and other birds have also built their homes in these artificial nests. कि गौरैया चूंकि पुराने घरों में छप्परों में मुकुओं में घर बनाती थी वो सब व्यवस्थाएं खत्म होती जा रही थी तो गौरैया बड़े खतरनाक स्थान पर घोंसले बनाने लग गई जहां पर उनके बच्चे गिरकर मरने लगे हमें उन बच्चों को गिरके मरने से बचाना था इसलिए हमने इन बॉक्सेस का निर्माण किया Meanwhile, on the occasion of World Sparrow Day on Sunday, the municipal corporation in western Rajkot city distributed clay houses for the sparrows to people to install in their homes to spread awareness about bird conservation. Many reasons have been attributed by experts in this field for the decline in sparrow population, which conclude the introduction of unleaded patrol, the burning of which produces harmful fumes toxic for the birds. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.